In this video, we'll go over how strict you need to be with your sleep times on a polyphasic schedule during the adaptation and why this is the case. We'll prioritize talking about the effects of moving sleeps and undersleeping and discuss how these will affect your adaptation as a whole. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm one of the main authors of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So let's get on with the video. When you're sleeping polyphasically, life might sometimes get in the way. You might have unexpected events happen that force you to stay awake when you should actually be sleeping. But I, I want to point out that once you've chosen your sleep times for your sleep schedule, it's very important that you adhere to them as well as possible. Since the body doesn't distinguish between weekends and weekdays, the same schedule should be kept throughout the week. It's also important that the scheduled sleep times are followed as closely as possible from day to day. We'll get to what to do when life gets in the way in later parts in this video, so keep watching. How strict you should be with your sleep times is currently being investigated. However, during the 2018 fall and 2019 spring daylight savings times, the community has conducted tests to monitor how slow schedules can be shifted each day without any negative side effects happening. What we found out is that shifts as short as even five minutes result in people experiencing negative symptoms, okay? While this does not give conclusive evidence that people's adaptation progresses are set back, it still suggests that it's best to stick to the sleep times as tightly as possible. The current community recommendation is actually to never move your wake-up alarms at all and only skip the beginning parts of the sleep or the whole sleep session when absolutely necessary. This teaches you to prioritize your sleep schedule and for you to work your life around it, around the few set sleep times that you have, which fosters much needed discipline uh, for later parts of the adaptation. An added benefit of not moving the alarms is that it's possible to set many alarms at once ahead of time that go off at the same times every day. So you don't need to worry about manual, manually setting like 20 alarms before you go to sleep. Instead, you can just rely on them being on from the get-go. Oh yeah, absolutely, I'm set! I have 40 alarms to go off each day automatically. No, no, Bob, I'm telling you, it's so much easier to do this than just to rely on a single alarm after every single sleep. You need to get on board with this. So when you are adapting to a schedule, it's important to emphasize that you should stick to all your sleep times as well as possible during the first month. As in going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time. Some small mess-ups are still tolerated. Uh, with the risk of dragging out the adaptation. Permanently altering the sleep schedule should be avoided if possible because the body is going to treat that as if you were oversleeping. And we'll talk more about oversleeping in a future video, but I'm telling you, it's not pretty, okay? So let's jump into talking about what to do when you are going to miss some sleep. If you know that you are going to miss some sleep, it's best to skip it rather than to move it, since moving sleep counts as oversleeping, which results in your adaptation being set back. This is because repartitioning requires strict adherence of sleep times, and moving sleep has been shown to have the same negative effects as simply adding another sleep during the day. Uh, missing sleep or undersleeping is however not as detrimental as oversleeping, okay? While it sets the adaptation back after the third adaptation stage, so when you're in stage 3 or stage 4, undersleeping does not confuse the body in the same way that oversleeping does, and the entrainment of the sleep schedule isn't completely ruined if you undersleep a bit. Undersleeping might result in 
decreased feelings of tiredness during the missed sleep times. As in, it's going to be harder to fall asleep in the next coming days. But the alternative of oversleeping is that you're going to be even more tired during the day, during the day for the next few days. And out of these two options, undersleeping is almost exclusively superior. It should be pointed out that when you miss a sleep, you're going to be more likely to fall asleep prematurely or oversleep your next sleep segment. To combat this, you need to set up appropriate alarms during this wake time or use harder alarms when you go for your next sleep. You could also ask someone to check on you to make sure that you aren't sleeping when you're supposed to be awake. Um, it's important to note that undersleeping should not be compensated for during the adaptation. If you undersleep, the optimal course of action is simply continuing with the schedule as normal, not making up for the lost sleep at a later time, okay? Bob, I told you this was going to happen! You rely on a manually set alarm! Of course you're going to oversleep when you pull an all-nighter! The one exclusion here where moving asleep results in a better success than skipping asleep is if you know that you're going to oversleep if you don't take the nap. If this happens, it's important to make sure that the moved nap isn't too close to the next nap or core, leaving a gap of at least four hours until the next sleep. If some parts of a core need to be skipped, it should be done in chunks of 90 minutes or in full cycles, to avoid waking up in the middle of a cycle if possible, which increases the risk of waking up during the slow wave sleep stage. If you have to skip your whole core, it's best to try to get some naps in at the times where you skipped so that you don't build up too much sleep deprivation, but can alleviate it a little bit. Okay, in future videos we're going to talk about how, what happens if you're oversleeping, and also how these recommendations change once you're adapted to a schedule, as that makes everything a bit more complicated. Anyways, please share in the comments below what experience you have with being forced to skip or move sleeps. Did it affect you in any negative way? Did you manage to avoid a big oversleep because you moved the sleeps instead? Tell us in the comments. Okay, take care people, and I will be seeing you in a future video. Nap well! Hey, I'm Akahana, an editor on this channel. If this video matters to you, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the latest info on mastering your sleep. We want to help you work towards the life you want on your terms and in your time. Please consider donating via our secure Ko-fi page as this helps sustain website costs and data gathering efforts across our communities. If you have any questions, check the links below and contact us directly. Thank you.